let's go back a little to the fateful year of 1993, at which time was one of the origins of Rusty's lack of love for a certain hymn. And um, essentially, the question that was proposed to me to ask, I like it as it stands, let me say it exactly as I got it. In 1993, why did you stay on at St. John's despite the unhealthy situation that existed then? Why did you stay? Well, it wasn't unhealthy at that time as, as, it, as it got to be. Uh, actually, it was 1994. That was my first year here. I came in 94, in May of 94. Um, this May, um, May 1st, I will be starting my 15th year here. It's hard to believe. Um, as I said, Irene was only 13 when I got here. So, um, and uh, Karim was five, yes. Um, so, when I first came here, I was part time. And I was only working 20 hours a week, and I came because um, one of the vestry members at that time was somebody I knew from my church, my other church. She came to the church lot to drop all things at our thrift shop, and I had left my other parish, and I had left ministry altogether. I decided I'm just going to do part-time work. I was filling in on Sundays, and that filling in on Sundays went from filling in to being here more often. Then we did a contract for 20 hours a week, and it was all pretty good until I started building up the congregation and spent more time. And as I spent more time, I got more interested in what was going on. And I asked at that point, where are all the financial records? Where are the bank books? Where's the checkbook? Who has those? And we discovered that, uh, I discovered that one person had all those at home. And when I asked her um, to see them and that they should really be brought here, um, there was a big fight. Um, couldn't figure out why there's a big fight. The long and short of it is that finally there's a, we had a, a fight where um, since she was head of the vestry at the time, the senior warden, she called the bishop, the deployment officer, and the um, uh, controller of the diocese here in order to try to take away my title and get rid of me and send me out of town. She had sent quite a few other people out of town packing long before me um, over a period of years. And it got down to a point where she finally was asking for a vote and the bishop had told her, he said, um, I'm sorry, I just want to let you know that everything you said is wrong. Father Hesse is right in what he's doing. And then the, she brought up the financial part and the control of the diocese says, we've looked at the books of what we can get our hands on. And um, everything seems to be in order. And then she tried to get it from a deployment angle, saying that I didn't have the, the right credentials, that I lied about my background and things like that. And the deployment officer said that we looked at everything, we can assure you it's just fine. So she had nowhere to go. So finally, she decided she was going to have a vote. And then Mrs. Schindler here, um, who had had about enough, I think, that night, as much as I had had. And this is, that's, we're, I'm making a long story short. But Mrs. Schindler finally said something, if I remember correctly, you can correct me, but I think it was, Grace, you're an evil woman and you need to go. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so, <laughs> so Grace said, okay, let's put it to a vote. So we voted 11, uh, 10 to 1, Grace voting the one <laughs> that she should go. And she hasn't been back since. And from that point forward, um, we started growing tremendously once she left. Even to this day, I, I meet people and they say, is that woman still at your parish? And I say, which one? Don't play that game with me. You know exactly which one I mean. I say, okay. And she was infamous. I mean, um, but she also was, I must in her defense, uh, I must say that um, she did stand up to the diocese at times that people needed to stand up to the diocese because the diocese treated this parish very, very poorly in those years. But when we finally, we couldn't get the books back from her, the financial records. And so Irene and I were trying to figure out what we we're going to do. So I happened to know somebody at the bank, Ginny Cantalupo, I've never forgot her name. We went to the bank together and we said, we need to change all the accounts. They said, oh, okay, well, who are the signatories in the account? And they looked at them and I said, well, what about this lady? I said, 
oh, she's no longer with us. I said, oh, she died. We're so sorry. I said, no. She's no longer with us. And and the woman looked at pardon and, and Irene said, she's no longer with us. <laughs> and the woman sort of got the idea. And said, she said, oh, well, you know what I'm going to put down here on the card where it says reason for change of account? I'm going to put, the woman is no longer with us. That way, I won't be lying, and neither will you. <laughs> so, Irene and I changed all the books that day. But what we found out was that we had a lot of money. We didn't know. And the reason being was because the deal was, the reason I would stay here was always tied into how much we were renting the rectory for. And as long as we were able to rent the rectory for a certain amount of money, that would cover my salary, which was $20,000 at that time. Um, but they were bringing a lot of money from the rectory, and uh, Grace had been keeping all the books at home. So we ended up, we had like almost $200,000, and we didn't even know. We were scraping for, we were doing, you know, um, bake sales for eight dollars on a Sunday in order to get things by. So she had kept all that money, which is why we have some money now um, and put aside um, to do that. But that's the reason that we never sing Amazing Grace in church. Oh. Oh, that's the reason. Oh. That's the reason. Because it was her song. Oh. And we sang it every single Week. She oh. had it. In fact, she had it pasted in front of the hymnals. Oh. We sang it every week because it was, as she said, her song. So after she left, I promised we would not sing that again. Oh, for and she didn't return something. Huh? Well, no, yeah. I mean, she didn't return many things. Not only did she not return the uh, the books, but she also didn't. She took my private communion set. I had made her a Eucharistic minister. She took it and would not return. She still has it to this day. So. Um, for my 20th anniversary, um, the parish chipped in and bought me a new private communion set to take to the sick. Um, but um, so she's quite a character. She's still around. She's at a neighboring parish, and I wish her well.